How old are you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you've got uh, you've got two or three debates with Ron Klein coming up, and I'm sure you're being advised on questions and answers and that kind of thing. And I'm not sure if it's going to be televised. Uh, probably on YouTube, I'll see something. But by the time those debates are over, I just hope that you have Ron Klein and Nancy Pelosi in one bucket. So when anybody leaves that debate, they know that a vote, a vote for Ron Klein is a vote for Nancy Pelosi. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, and one of the things, yes, you know, he does have a 98% uh, voting record with uh, with Nancy Pelosi, but even more so, 100% with union demand bosses, and that's very important because Florida is a right to work state. So uh, we do have three events that are coming up. There are actually a total of about 12 to 13 candidate forum debates out there. Now, the one of the uh, events that he has agreed to is a uh, uh, Michael Putney show. It's a televised, so it's not a public forum. Of course, that will not be able to be seen uh, throughout the district. But uh, there is one uh, public event, uh, the Sun Sentinel is sponsoring a debate. We don't know the location yet. And then also the Palm Beach uh, Civic Association up on Palm Beach Island. So, you know, you don't want to do all 13. I'll be there at, at every one of those 13 events. So please come out. Yes, soon to be mayor, of course. Just to let you know, Alan, I was at the Customer Vault Government Committee meeting before I came here. And October the 6th at the uh, at the uh, Charter School, uh, there will be a candidate forum there too, so you'll be getting the invite for it. Okay, uh, you're, you're right next to Josh Groom, a campaign manager, so let him know. Okay. <laughs> Hot off the press. Hot off the press. Other questions? Everybody wants to get to the wings, right? That's what we're <laughs> 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 Anyone? Yes, Jay. Uh, what, what can we do to, uh, after you get elected, come and, and well, I mean, there are two options. I mean, a lot of people keep talking about repealing the Obamacare. Well, that's very interesting because it will take a two-thirds majority to override a presidential veto to, to make that happen. So probably the most reasonable thing that can, that can occur is that you defund the, you know, the taxes and the 111 government agencies that they're looking to have uh, come about. You know, one of the things I agree about uh, as part of Obamacare is that we should have coverage for pre-existing conditions. But for the most part, when you look at this bill, it has nothing to do with, with this law. It has nothing to do with health. It has nothing to do with care. You know, I sat in uh, with uh, the Palm Beach uh, Medical uh, Advisory Board, and they're absolutely incensed, the doctors are. There's no addressing of tort reform. There's no addressing of breaking down the state-by-state -state, uh, boundaries that you have on insurance agencies or breaking down the insurance commission. We've got to put Americans back in charge of their own health care, and we've got to incentivize it. We should not be taxing health savings accounts, which is what they're doing in Obamacare. And uh, i got to tell you something. You know, if you are here and you are a uh, non-black person, there's a little racist tax in the uh, Obamacare called the tanning booth tax. <laughs> I'm not going to the tanning booth. <laughs> so you guys need to kind of get upset about that. Thing. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, no, Winmore is not. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Joe Bud. Winmore is 19. As you know, there's a mentality that exists that with seniors, that Franklin Roosevelt is still alive somewhere. He's hanging out with Elvis. How do you approach these people and make it Well, I think you, you, you've got to stick to the principles. You know, I, I, when you go back and you study conservative ideology, which was once upon a time classical liberalism, you read the writings of Hobbes and Locke and Rousseau and Montesquieu, you read the, the, the Federalist Papers, you read the documents of the Founding Fathers. That's what you have to go out and talk to people about, what limited government means, which is truly what the Constitution is about. Uh, security from internal and external threats, individual responsibility and accountability, you know, liberty, free market solutions. There is risk involved in the free market. And people out in the free market have to learn how to mitigate those risks. It's not about taxpayer funds going in and bailing out the private sector. But we must have a vibrant private sector. It's about in ingenuity, innovation, investment. That's how you grow an economy. You've got to talk about leadership. It's based upon merit and talent. You have to talk about our traditional cultural values. So you've got to frame all of the issues out there, I believe, in those seven points. Most people don't agree with you seven for seven. At worst case, maybe six for seven. But that's what you have to do. But then guess what? There are some people out there you're just not going to get through to. 
and you don't put your head through a wall to, to do that. But you know something, George brought up a great point. We've got to energize the Republican base here in Palm Beach and Broward counties. And we've got to take this message to independents. We also have to take this message to Democrats. You know, there are Democrats out there that don't agree with this liberal, progressive, socialist legislative agenda. You've got to, you know, talk to them. You've got, you know, this is why I don't go out and say I hate Democrats. I'm bashing on Democrats. It's about the principles of governance. It's about conservative ideology and principles against liberal. It is about do we empower the American people, do we enslave the American people? Do we believe that the way that we grow an economy is through growing the public sector or through the private sector? I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, take a, a, a trip, or if you can, or, or ask somebody to, to send you a picture of what's going on in Washington, D.C. right now. You want to know where all the construction is in the United States of America, and all the development, and all the cranes? It's in Washington, D.C. One of them is a new IRS building. <laughs> I don't see a lot of cranes and construction and development going on down here in South Florida. What I do see is 13% unemployment in South Florida, and I see a high foreclosure rate that is bringing down this entire state so that we're third in the nation. That's what you talk to people about. You talk to people about the facts. And all the little sideshow antics that uh, you know Ron Klein wants to run on the TV, let him continue to do it because we're going to hammer him on what is really important to the American people. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, do you have any comment on sort of the good, privileged life, the rank, honor, and privilege that governing officials, both parties, seem to afford themselves? Congressional pensions, Coral Springs, things like that? Well, I mean, you know, George brought up a great point. You know, they are a reflection of us. And it is, how many people, were, you know, heard of Pavlov despair? Um, okay, if you continue to reward bad behavior, what do you get more of? More, more yeah. bad behavior. So you continue to send these same people up to Washington, D.C., who, you know, don't even have to vote for a congressional raise anymore, things of that nature, is automatic, that are really becoming. You know, it's almost as though they're becoming a new style Soviet Politburo. Mm -hmm. You know, they're there, we're down here. How I many people remember the uh, the feudal board system back in the Middle Ages? That's what we have. Congressional districts and states are starting to resemble, you know, fiefdoms. And you all are serfs. And you there working for them. And that's why you got someone like, you know, Ron Klein that is absolutely incensed. That, how dare this little guy who is just a common soldier would come and challenge me to run for a congressional district because they believe that they're entitled. And that's not what America is about. That's not what our founding fathers want. Yes, ma'am. I see. Thank you. Hey, did you get that on the Thank you. We don't live to God's ears. Oh yeah, the ta anti semitism task force. Yeah. 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 yeah, Keith Ellison from Minnesota. Right. And he refuses to uh, do anything about that. I, I, even though a lot of citizens have shown an interest in that, will he no longer be on that committee? Well, it depends. You know, I mean, once you have the new Congress that comes in, I mean, committee leaderships change and, and everything. But I can uh, almost promise you that if I get appointed to the Anti-Semitism Task Force, I will kindly ask Congressman Keith Ellison, if he is reelected, to step away from that committee because of some of the past ties that he has had to terrorist activities uh, here in this country, uh, CARE, Hamas, uh, supporting uh, type of entities. Uh, I, I'm very serious about the fact that we have a, a wolf in the hen house. Yes, sir. Um, number one, what was that book you suggested that we uh, read? Control freaks. Yeah, control freaks. freaks. Yeah. And to the gentleman in the back with the Democratic Party, I'm also a conservative Democrat. I'm also fixing to leave the party. <laughs>